Good morning. Welcome to worship at All Saints Lutheran on the 17th Sunday after Pentecost and the first Sunday after Hurricane Ian. Hope everyone fared okay. If you know of any outstanding needs in the community, please let us know so we can try to be of assistance. And a special word of welcome to all who are worshiping at home today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. Let us kneel as we are able. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in the new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. People of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved of God, called to be saints, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Benevolent, merciful God, when we are empty, fill us. When we are weak in faith, strengthen us. When we are cold in love, warm us that with fervor we may love our neighbors and serve them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Habakkuk, the oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen, or cry to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. The word of the Lord. A reading from 2 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Jesus Christ, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. 
Recalling your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day when I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite our children forward for the children's sermon. Good morning. I'm so happy to see you guys here. Oh, here comes one more. I know. I'm so glad to see you guys here this morning. How's everybody doing? How was that big storm we had? It was pretty bad. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, that was a pretty bad storm. Were you guys brave? I know, that's how I felt. That wind was so strong, it was really making me a little anxious and nervous. No, I'm so glad that we were all safe and we were, the power went out at your house? Yeah. Your house is safe and strong. I know, when you try to plug things in, and there's no power, it doesn't work. Oh, yours didn't? Yeah. Well, guess what? We were praying for all of you during the storm, and I'm so glad to see you here today. I want to talk about one last thing. We've been talking about some different things in the church that are special. There's three special things up front here that have glass. You got it. The last one we haven't talked about yet, because we remember we looked at this one over here. The baptismal font. We talked about the ombo, which is where people read God's word. And then the glass cross. Do you want to walk around and get a little closer look? Let's go this way and we'll see up close. Why do we have so many crosses at church? Get, let me get down on you. Why do we have crosses at the church? because Jesus died on the cross, and that was a sad thing. But why do we show it so beautifully? Because it also turned into a very happy and wonderful thing, because Jesus rose again on Easter Day, and the reason that he went through that very sad time was to save us and to show us how much God loves us. That's why, look, we make crosses beautiful and colorful and even decorate them with this glass. Let's back up just a little bit. 
What do you see in the middle of that glass circle? Let's back up just a little bit. What's on there? It almost looks like flowers or like sparkles. It even kind of looks like butterfly wings. If you look at it in a certain angle, it's broken pieces of glass, isn't it? And you know what? Even though that glass is broken, the light shining through makes it look so beautiful. So I want you guys to think about that. When we think about the cross, even though the cross was a time when Jesus gave his body to be broken for us, God made something beautiful out of that gift, and he rose, raised Jesus on Easter. And guess what? Even when we feel like we may have done wrong and we feel broken sometimes, God's light makes us beautiful too. Can we have a prayer about that together? Let's fold our hands. Yes. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, Thank you for Jesus. He died on the cross and rose again to new life. Thank you for the beauty of the cross, even through the brokenness. Amen. All right, thank you guys so much for coming up. It was great to see you. You can head on back. Thank you. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink, later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what he was commanded? So you also, when you have done all you have, were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, for those preachers out there who were trying to write a sermon during the hurricane, the words of 2 Timothy, thank you, Lisa, for making that correction. That was a typo. 2 Timothy, in our second lesson today, acted as a balm. They read, For this reason I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and of self-discipline. I would love for you to repeat that part with me, that last part about fear, so the next time you're in the midst of a storm, physically or spiritually, you'll have it committed to memory. So repeat after me. For God did not give us a spirit of fear. For God did not give us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power, a spirit of power. And, of love. and of love and of self-discipline. Self that can be your memory verse for this week. Through our baptism, we have been given the gift of God within us, which is not and never has been a spirit of fear. Now, that does not mean that it's wrong to feel anxious or afraid. It would be difficult for any one of us to ride out a storm on the magnitude of what we just experienced 
or on the magnitude of what some of you are living through in your lives right now without feeling a little bit of natural fear and anxiety. After all, we're human, but we do not let that fear and anxiety get the best of us because we do not carry it alone. We have the spirit. In prayer and humility, we give our worries over to the triune God and rely on their power, their peace, and their love. There's a reason that these words from 2 Timothy are such a comfort in the storm. Because Paul knew a thing or two about adversity. He had been persecuted, he had been rejected, he knew pain, and he knew in all likeliness that his own death was imminent. Word had started going around though, likely in response to Paul's misfortune, that real leaders in the faith would be spared from suffering that Christians with true faith would not endure hardships, but instead be comforted by this hedge of protection around them. Does that sound familiar at all? Do you ever hear that kind of language from Christians today, that true believers, the truly blessed, are those who are living a life of ease, prosperity, and lack of suffering? When I hear that kind of message, whether through Christians on social media or from letters 1,800 years ago, I wonder how much does that sound like Jesus? How much does that version of blessed really sound like the Christ who died for you? The second letter to Timothy offers Christian encouragement of a different sort. This letter was penned around the time of St. Paul's martyrdom. And the exhortations for believers that we hear in this reading are these. Do not be afraid, even though things get scary. Do not be ashamed, even when this world shames you. Do not turn away from suffering for the gospel, and do not forget to rely on God. Instead of casting judgment on those experiencing adversity, the message is this. Do not be afraid. Do not see it as failure. Lean in to suffering and trust God. Why would the words of this more seasoned minister of the gospel to his younger protege be framed in this way? Well, first, they defend Paul's own ministry. Paul suffered, and it wasn't a failure. It was proof of his enduring faith. But secondly, they help Timothy the recipient of this letter, know what to expect. If you're going to pick up the baton and run the race that I've run, Paul says, expect adversity. Be prepared and face it head on. You see, in the life of discipleship, if we truly want to commit ourselves to following the way of Christ, we need to be prepared for resistance If we accept the inevitability of suffering, if we expect adversity, it won't be quite so bad. When we come to understand that it's just a part of the life of faith, it won't cause that cognitive dissonance that can come with suddenly experiencing the unexpected. If we as disciples expect to be rejected, misunderstood, or judged for the sake of the gospel, we won't live in shame. If we expect the unexpected and know that whatever this life throws at us, God's got us, then we will not live in fear. If we expect that our knowledge and abilities will fall short of the power of God, then we will not resist relying on God, trusting in him instead of leaning on our own understanding. But on the other hand, If we operate under the expectation that we will know it all and we will be able to do it all, to rise to the top, to be celebrated, congratulated, and honored by all in this world, to always be in control, boy, will we be in for a surprise. October has officially arrived, and so has the spooky season. Have you started seeing the Halloween decorations going up, those that didn't fly away in the storm? And who here is going to Fright Nights at the farm? Not me. Standing in that line, though, I bet you start to get chills from the anticipation. 
and then you get up close, you start to shiver at the sound of the screams from within the haunted house, and entering your hair starts standing on end. But what really makes people jump out of their skin? It's the surprises. It's just like that spooky statue on somebody's front porch when you go up trick-or-treating and you reach for the candy and all of a sudden the eyes turn red and it starts talking and moving. Those are the surprises that really solicit the screams on Halloween night. And all of that is good fun at this time of year, if you like that sort of thing. But encountering the unexpected in life when you're not prepared sometimes is not as much fun. Being caught off guard can really throw you for a loop. Of course, there's always going to be things in life that we never see coming, some good and some bad. But Paul's message today is this. When it comes to the life of discipleship, don't be surprised when somebody judges you. Don't be afraid because you're not alone. Go into this thing with your eyes wide open Rely on God and receive his power and his peace. To answer Christ's call means to take up our cross and to do it willingly. To walk with Christ means, like Jesus, to expect resistance, rejection, and sacrifice. If we know Jesus, that should not come as a surprise. And if we know Jesus, we know we do not bear it alone, like him, we have the gift of God within us, the gift of the Spirit, who is a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. But to someone unfamiliar with the gospel of Jesus, all of this probably sounds like nails down a chalkboard. It is so antithetical to the self-reliant, self-promoting attitude of the world. But to those of us who, like Timothy, have been taught by the Loises and the Eunices of this world in our lives, the mentors of faith who have gone before us. To us, this message will sound as familiar as those old Sunday school songs they sang to us as children. We who have been shown the life of faith can have peace because we know, and we trust that for us, Christ has already won the victory over fear, over shame, over suffering. We are confident that while our temporary anxieties and affliction may affect us now, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We call Christ the firstborn of the dead, the firstborn of the resurrection. He has made us more than conquerors. He has gone before us to prepare the way so that we will live fully into that victory in the life to come. You see, Jesus has already welcomed us into his kingdom, but we're still living in this chronos time, this linear time. That's why we still have to be confronted with fear and rejection and suffering. But our victorious Lord Jesus, along with all those saints who have now departed from this world, are already living fully in Kairos time, God's time. And in Kairos time, all suffering has ended. In Kairos time, the dawning of the kingdom of God has already come in its fullness. And every injustice has been undone, and every inequity has been overcome, and God has already wiped every tear from all faces. In a paradoxical way, those of us who believe exist in a reality where the kingdom has already come in Cairo's time, even while we're still here traveling through Kronos time. Kind of hurts your brain to think about it, doesn't it? Because we believe in a God who is bigger than our day-to-day -day existence, bigger than our fears and hang-ups, bigger than our shames, our losses, and our suffering, the God in whom we live and breathe and have our being has already won the victory over all these things through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I have to admit that I stepped away from this sermon for a while because there was a time when the wind and the rain, as some of our kids were describing, started really intensifying and I was not able to focus on anything else. 
I was doing pretty good there for a while, trying to be the master of my fears, but when those winds really started howling and the debris started raining down, I started realizing that I really wasn't dealing with it as well as I thought I was. But it just so happened that shortly after the strongest bands of the storm arrived, the eye of the hurricane, or at least the version of the eye that we got here in this area, arrived. And I had to run back to my sermon because isn't it so often that it's at the height of the storm that we receive the grace that we need? Nobody wants to be in a storm so intense that it takes up all your energy just to get through it, but isn't that exactly when God's grace arrives in a way that you just can't miss it, just like the eye of the hurricane. So when the storm is threatening your peace, or the winds of change are blowing, or the clouds start making you feel that this world is getting darker, just remember 2 Timothy, do not be afraid. God's grace is sufficient for you. Do not be ashamed. You have a place in the kingdom. Do not turn away from suffering, for you are walking in the footsteps of Jesus. And do not forget to rely on God. Amen. church let us confess our faith 
I believe in God. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for your holy church in every place and for those who serve the example of Christ. We especially pray for our pastors and administrative staff. Help them to live by faith and walk by the light of your gospel. God of grace, For the parts of the world ravaged by natural disaster, relieve those affected by floods, wildfires, droughts, earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes, especially those affected by Hurricane Ian. God of grace, for every nation and for those entrusted with authority, grant our leaders self-discipline in all things and inspire them with love for your people. God of grace, for victims of violence, abuse, and neglect, heal those who have been harmed and protect those who are vulnerable for all who are sick, especially Carolyn, Carolyn. Grace, grace, Lynn, Lynn. Marie, Marie, Irma, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Stephen, Stephen, Chuck, Chuck, Claire, Claire, Pete, Pete, Asta, Asta, Debbie, Debbie, May, May, Lucy, Lucy, Tina, Tina, Kelly, Kelly, Anna, Anna, Gloria, Gloria, and those we named before you now. For this and every congregation, rekindle your gifts within your people and inspire councils, committees, and individuals to plan and work together that all may know your love. Bless our All Saints knitters and their prayer shawl ministry. God of grace. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also you. Let us share that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Glorious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets the table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks for grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. Thanks be to God.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we may serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for announcements. Well, I'm glad that storm has passed uh, well enough for us to gather this afternoon for the blessing of the animals. So if you have any furry friends at your house that you'd like to bring, we're going to meet out at the Kessner Center grassy area out there. Please do bring something to sit on, either a blanket or a folding chair or something. Make sure that um, all dogs are on leashes just to make sure they can all be blessed and peaceful and not fighting. Um, and cats in carriers would be great. Um, so we look forward to seeing you all there at 4 o'clock back at the Kessner Center. Uh, the other announcement is that the Seabrook Island Retreat actually has gotten pushed back one week. So if you'd like to join us October 14th through 16th, make sure to let me know this week so we can make sure we have room for everyone who's interested in joining us out there at the beach. I think that's all our announcements this morning. So now please receive this charge and sending blessing. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. God, a God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. 